So ICS, it is a psychology organization and it works in two departments. First is one-to-one -one counseling department, wherein we provide counseling. We have trained professionals. And the second department is a training department, wherein we have psychology-related courses, where we teach all the psychologists are RCI licensed and they have 10 years plus experience. So today we have webinar. Okay, you can turn on your camera after five minutes, that's fine. So today we have webinar that is going to be taken by Akriti ma'am. Just ensure that you are till the last and you don't miss any part because how to get the certificate, we are going to mention it once this webinar ends. So make sure that you are not leaving it in between and we're attending the whole webinar so that you get the procedure for certification. So Akriti, she is a counseling psychologist and mindfulness coach, and she's going to take the webinar. Hello, everyone. Very good evening. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you, ICS, for a very warm welcome. Okay. I can see a few familiar faces also. So good to see you. Okay. Nice. I request everyone to switch on their videos since it's an interactive session. Okay. Great, great. All right. Okay, so let's start. So since you already are aware about, uh, we are going to start with the webinar on counseling skills, okay? But we are going to start with introduction as well. And before that, I would really want all of you to uh, build a small connection with me, okay, before we start and with a small introduction. You've already got my introduction, but still I'm going to introduce. But before that, I would really want all of you, those I can see, uh, can go ahead with the introduction. So introduction has a slight twist. You're going to do a dance move and introduce yourself. All right. You can sit and do it. Sit and do it. Just a normal movement and introduce yourself. Tell me your name. Okay. What do you do? And what is the purpose of joining this webinar? And one thing that you really like to do. Okay. But you have to start with a dance move. All right. We'll go quickly and then we'll proceed further. Okay. Who's going first? Just an introduction. Come on. <laughs> you don't need any dance skill for this for sure. Okay, should I pick random then? Cool. Okay. Uh, I can see Ashima. Go ahead. Uh, hello, good evening. It's me, Ashima Padan. Ashima. Ashima, is it or Asma? Oh. Asma, A S M A. Asma. Okay, Asma. Asma and then Ashima. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Acha. Sorry, sorry, sorry. By mistake. It's okay, you go ahead. Yeah, it's me, Asma Pathan. I'm a housewife. I'm continuing my study after 13 years. Wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. But yeah. I can't see you. Ah, Ma'am, I, I just... Uh, okay, okay. It's okay. But so good to have you here, Asma. Uh -huh, yeah, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Okay, okay. Yes, Ashima. So since Ashima was spared, but because she couldn't do, do the dance, but I'm not going to spare you all. So go ahead. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Ashima and I'm from Nangal, Punjab. I am a student. 
and uh, i find uh, psychology as a very interesting subject so that's why i'm here great ashima i'm going to dance move and this is <laughs> <laughs> okay great so good to have you here ashima thank you all right next who's going next Rina, go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. My name is uh, Rina Mahato. I'm from West Bengal. I'm basically working with a child. I'm uh, I'm a psychologist. I'm working with a child, but I wanted to um, develop my career on both adults and child both. So that's why I joined the course, and uh, my dance move is like this. <laughs> nice nice great reena so good to have you here okay great next manish manish i can't hear you mam mera introduction ho chuka hai wo february batch ka hu aapka introduction ho chuka hai तो आप एक और बार इंट्रोडक्शन दे सकते हो मुझे पता है तो मैम आई एम मनीष कुमार सिंह आई एम फ्रॉम छत्तीसगढ़ आई एम स्टडिंग फार्मेसी इन थर्ड ईयर ओके ग्रेट मनीष एंड व्हाट अबाउट योर डांस मूव ओके शॉर्ट एंड सिंपल ग्रेट गुड टू हैव यू हियर अगेन मनीष okay next kushbu uh hello ma'am good evening good evening everyone uh my name is kushbu and uh, okay this is my dance move <laughs> okay uh i am uh, from gujarat uh, currently i am a teacher and i am pursuing ecc course and um, i joined this course because i wanted to go more deep into uh, learning about children because i love kids and uh, along with teaching i want to uh, pursue this as an additional skill so that i can you know do academically well and i can uh, you know learn more about children's behavior as well so that is the reason that you know interest right great great kushbu so good to have you here thank you ma'am okay zelpa good to have you here again <laughs> thank you my head a zelpa is my name I live in Delhi, but I'm from Africa, Zambia, precisely. I'm a journalist. I work in the fields. I live in Basantiha at the moment. Great, great. Thank you. Great. So good to have you here. Okay. Yes, Vibhuti, Vibhuti, and then Dilkash. Is it? Yeah. Hello, I'm Vibhuti Jain from Madhya Pradesh. um i'm uh, i have taken a child psychology practical program from ics and uh, so for <laughs> for uh, so i'm here to uh, gain further knowledge about counseling and uh, develop my skills and my dance move is <laughs> <laughs> nice nice so good to have you your reputi thank okay. you yes dilkash go ahead Yes. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Uh, I'm from Pune, Maharashtra, and I work as a facility supervisor uh, for Bajaj Auto Limited. And also, I am work uh, studying in BA final year. It's a distance education. Nice. Great. Great. Your dance move. <laughs> <laughs> Short and simple. <laughs> Okay, good to have you here, Dilkash. All right. So those who are left, they can put their introduction in the chat box. Okay, and you're not able to switch on your videos for some reason. That's all right. But try to be on the camera. Okay. Okay. Also, like you already got my introduction. You know me. Okay. So, like I won't take much time in that. Okay. So I'll straight away start with the. uh webinar okay all right so let me just present so 
My name is Rajni. Hi, Rajni. Hi. Uh, I'm very glad to meet you, ma'am. Actually, I want to become the a counselor uh, for kids, and I'm teaching professional in the New Delhi. It told me so. Please, ma'am, uh, uh, I know about your uh, my mentally developed uh, abilities. How to uh, introduce and other people activities very different. So uh, very similarly activities and not justify that uh, how to do that time. So you please advise me. <laughs> so activities. So see today we are going to talk about the skills. Okay, that a counselor should have and like what how we actually you know use the skills in the process. Okay, uh, so I might give uh, some examples in between, but we are not like going to talk about purely about the activities that we use because that's a long process. Okay. okay actually, ma'am, uh, as the same, uh, actually, uh, ma'am, uh, two children to uh, between only zero point zero one friends uh, marking and then activities going to mark and uh, uh, sometimes only one less uh, percent. Uh, and then how to uh, understood that child and very upset. So you please answer man that how to counsel that children. So maybe like if I'll go ahead with the you know I'll start with it first and then you know you might get your answer and later on I might answer it answer your question. Is that okay? Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. I'll take the questions in the end. Okay. Okay. Okay, so can you see my screen? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, all right. Since uh, we all are aware about the process about the of counseling, okay, it's it's a relationship between the you know you being the counselor and a client, okay, the person that who has come for the sessions right so it's not only counseling is the process it's not a one-time thing we always focus on the overall thing on all the aspects it's not only about you are just helping the person in one way in one aspect okay it's a collaborative relationship and you have to maintain that throughout working on each and every aspect of the person of uh, emotional physical social mental in all the aspects not just one so if a client has come to uh, suppose like you know i have sleep issues okay and that's it the person is only complaining about the sleep issues right so your focus will not only about the sleep issues it is much more to it okay you are going to go deeper into the thing okay what is the reason what are the thoughts when you are not able to sleep, so what are the thoughts related to it? And, you know, at that time, what are the thoughts and what do you feel usually? Okay, is there any other thing that you can feel along with that? Then we question, we start questioning. So it actually helps in the exploring the problem more, okay, in helping the client or the person to reflect on the thoughts and the emotions they are having, okay, and then problem solving. We get to that level, okay. Make sure when we are in the process, we never advise, we never suggest, okay? We are not in the position to advise the person or give any sort of suggestions to the client, all right? It's a process and here we are just helping them, we are guiding them to different directions, okay? Where they feel stuck, where they fear, feel that, okay, they're not able to do anything, they're not able, they're confused about certain things, or uh, you're not getting any direction, so we are helping them to get to the direction or maybe open the new direction for themselves, right? Reflecting on thoughts, emotions, addressing that one by one and then going towards a new direction, that is the process of counseling. You never tell them. You just, through questioning, you just make them realize that's a certain realization that they come up with through this counseling process. Right. Okay. <clears throat> now talking about the purpose, core principles of counseling. You can note down the pointers if you want to. Okay. Though you are going to get the PPT, but you still, you can note down the pointers. Okay. 
core principles of uh, of counseling is empathy respect confidentiality non judgmental attitude okay empathy of course one needs to be empathetic towards the person you need to understand more rather than being okay it's okay it happens it's fine you will be you will get through this situation or it will be fine of course we use these words but not these sentences you are not giving sympathy to the person right be empathetic i understand your issues completely i totally i'm here to support you i'm totally here to guide you i'm right here with you okay this is how you make them feel comfortable and show empathetic attitude towards them right like that that comes from within it completely you are accepting the person the way they are no matter whatever the perspectives the beliefs the values they are coming up with you are going to accept it the way they are the way they are talking the way they are describing them right then there is respect of course respect is uh, both the ways but here talking about the process so of course respect should be in every aspect not just okay if they have different values they have different beliefs they have different set of mindset or maybe they have different perspectives which is which might be you know like it's completely out of the box it's not even connected sometimes with the real world right sometimes like and here you need to respect that you need to respect their choices even if they come up with some relationship issues and they and they come up with this uh, you know like i'm just giving an example they come up with this thing that uh, you know what i'm i'm like i am with somebody and i also develop feelings with for somebody also right and i'm i don't know like whether it's the right thing or not or they are confused about it and they also coming up with the same thing that you know i feel guilty about it or things but here you are not in the position to judge or say something or question them on this it's about respecting no matter what whatever they have come up with respect at least to the process they are going to get the guidance in a proper manner right then confidentiality very important confidentiality is the first comforting line that we go like we um, make to the client it's like everything will be confidential between us no matter what whatever you are going to discuss here it will not go outside this room it will be not disclosed to anybody else no matter what no matter what the situation is if even if you think that you know you're going to uh, i am going to uh, discuss this with your family member or with your friend so it's not going to happen for sure till the time you want me to talk to them all right or till the time you want me to like talk about certain things to them or anybody any concerned person right so confidentiality should be the highlight okay and it's it's a comforting environment where the person starts gaining trust that's why it is very important it's a comforting line right then non judgmental attitude of course not judging judging means questioning directly to the person oh so so what made you do that oh do you think that that was the right thing to do it first listen first listen with the, the like with the open minded thing with like you know proper communication if the person is talking without judging them listen to them okay whatever they want to say whatever they are describing they are coming up with a story incident any any past trauma anything related to the issue listen to them with a with a with an open mind right without judging anybody judging is not the thing we keep observing the person throughout okay right now if i'm talking to you but i'm also observing you okay you are listening to me you are making eye contact okay or maybe somebody is maybe drowsy or maybe you don't want to like you know you're not taking interest in that these are the observations i'm not judging you right same way you are not judging me you're observing me how am i talking how am i explaining to you whether the explanation is going in the right way or not you know you're able to understand or not these are the observations throughout the counseling process we observe the person right okay now this is the process the core process of counseling right assessment first we assess the client okay assess what the what the concerns are and taking their personal history past history taking their uh, strengths their weaknesses things they need to work upon basically and goals how like proper assessment procedure has to be done starting with that and then exploring the client more 
how they actually come up with the situations, how they deal with life situations, how they're coming up with the relationships, how they're maintaining the relationships, how they're using their space, okay? Maybe in terms of personal and professional also. You need to explore in every aspect, okay? Then there is goal setting. Goal setting is the collaborative method, right? Where we actually, like suppose the person is coming up with it, I don't feel, um, you know, I think that if the other person is, uh, you know, is has done something wrong or maybe has, has said something to me, so I think the problem is with me, okay? I feel guilty about it. I think like even like maybe, you know, I have done some mistake or maybe I've said something wrong to the person. That's why the person is uh, reacting in such a manner. Here, but the person is, going low on self-esteem the person is going low on confidence the person is not able to confidently communicate the person that no it's like the fault is from your side i don't think i've committed that mistake or i've not done that i'm giving an example because goal is self-confidence self-esteem these are the goals now this is the first thing that you got to know and maybe starting from self-awareness okay so then we are going to work on the self-awareness using some activities or the procedures, okay? So that will be the first goal. Then working on the second goal on self-confidence. So how to build confidence? We go ahead with certain activities related to that. How to build self-confidence, right? Maybe like, you know, talking to, talking to a person, communication skills, social skills. Through that, we have different, different lot of activities. I might share uh, the activities with all of you later, okay? But here, how to use, it's not only about talking, okay, throughout. It's also about using the activities, knowing the person, how they actually deal with certain things. If the situation comes, situation-based questions, okay, situation-based responses, what do you get? And through the responses, you probe further. That's how we go ahead with the process. And that comes to the intervention thing, where we use the techniques, approaches, with the client approaches as in if the person needs CBT, the cognitive behavior therapy, then you are going to use the techniques of CBT. If the person needs person-centered therapy, okay, or psychodynamic therapy or expressive arts-based therapy or just art therapy, so you are going to use techniques from that, okay? Not necessarily you're going to use them all. You can also pick some technique where you can think that the person will respond to this or the person needs that. Okay, so it's need-based approaches, need-based approaches, right? So this is the intervention process, how we use throughout. Then now the process of counseling, okay? Process is reflection and insight, skill building, closure and follow-up. It's like when we are using the intervention, so we start from this through reflection and gaining insight. Reflection is reflecting on the thoughts. Okay, what, what are you thinking? And the way you are thinking, why you are thinking, where it is coming from. This is a reflection. Okay. And the way you are feeling your emotion, maybe you're feeling aggressive or maybe you're feeling angry. So where it is coming from? Is it related to the thought or the situation? Is some situation is related to that? Or maybe some pending decision is there which you are literally confused about or maybe it's some relationship or career. Any aspect could be there. But reflection helps the person to gain that insight, to gain that awareness that, okay, I think this is related to this thing and that's why I'm having this thought. Maybe like, you know, it's a repetition or maybe multiple thoughts are there. So it helps them to go ahead with step by step, one by one, reflect on that and then work upon it. So suppose if the person is having this thought, uh, the constant thought that um, I don't think that I'm going to, uh, you know, clear this, uh, the next round of interview. I don't think like, you know, it's it's great getting really hard or uh, the first round was pretty hard and I think like now it's going to be harder. Okay. And then the person is having thoughts related to that and then overthinking is happening. Due to that overthinking, anxiety is happening. Then anxiety and then that's causing a lot of physical changes as well. And the person is under immense stress because of the pressure of clearing the interview, right? And then the person is having negative thoughts, mostly. 
will i be able to clear the interview uh, if not then i i won't get the job or what if i won't get the job anywhere what if i'm not going to clear uh, you know other interviews as well if they you know do this these hard questioning right these are the thoughts they come up with this is just an example but this is how they you know connect the thoughts and the emotions are connected to it so we go ahead with the reflection like one by one okay starting from the first thought what happened in the last interview okay and what made you think that you are not able to clear the second interview okay these are the questions and always remember we go ahead with the open ended questioning right these are the reflection and then gaining the insight okay what they need to do in that situation then also i'll tell you about the shifting of thoughts but here we help in the reflection process then skill building skill building is coping skills problem solving strategies adaptive behavior to manage challenges or regular emotions so basically working on the things maybe if the person is having lack lack in social skills or the person is uh, lacking in communication skills okay then we are helping them to cope up with that we are helping them to work on that right but step by step one by one okay social skills how they need to initiate the conversation how they need to hold the conversation if the other person is like you know trying to do that and you are not getting the words you are not getting them then you get to the situation or you help the person to do the role play and work on the skill that they are lacking in okay there are a lot of role plays we happen happen in the skill building process okay then only the person will be able to cope up with that thing also get to the problem solving thing solution focused thing rather than most of problem focused thing right then there is closure and follow up this is the last part of the counseling session where you think that the person is you will get to know through the statements of the person earlier where there is negative pattern was going on suddenly there would be positive shifts suddenly the person will start coming up with oh you know what i can do this or i started doing this you can feel the change in the person okay and when you see lot of a lot of changes as happening all the goals are accomplished the skills are developed but still they need to work upon they need to keep working upon that then there it's time to close the session okay the closure is needed follow up when the person needs like okay there are certain uh, things which is left okay there are certain strategies that you need to they still need to follow then we can give some follow up sessions but that will not be in a row okay that will be in like okay maybe uh, twice a, a week or once in, once in like two weeks or twice a month like that follow up like that and later on when it's not needed then like the person can end but you have to make sure when you are closing the session when you are giving a closure to the person you will always provide the strategies to the person that they need to keep working upon that will be the take away for them okay strategies suppose they are working on the skill building so how they need to keep communicating working on the skill how do they keep working on the social skills developing that developing the personality aspect okay how they can keep practicing the activities what you already did in the session so that they can keep working upon the skills and get keep getting better right these are the strategies you give strategies is not just the individuals we give suppose like there is individual sessions that are happening but also if you are working in the school setup or if you are working with the family counseling or you know the family so you give strategies to everybody right if you are working with a child you will give strategies to parents or teachers also to follow in certain way classroom strategies strategy uh, strategies parents need to follow at home okay for the child then it's a collaborative work and they need to keep following that just for the child's betterment or the person's betterment right here if an adult is as a produce of course you are you know uh, focusing on the adult and giving the strategies accordingly always remember that should be need based where it is needed not unnecessary strategies where it is needed keep it very short and crisp okay and they need to follow that right okay now we have types of counseling okay types of course individual counseling like what we say one on one okay what i'm talking about uh, one on one counseling only one whether it's a child whether it's a teenager whether it's a young adult adult 
elder people so you're going ahead with the one on person other person if anybody has come up with the person maybe a colleague a family member partner friend so that will be the uh, referent okay they are just come with the person okay just to support them okay but otherwise it will be an individual counseling purely then there is couple counseling where the couple has approached you right where the where the where there is marital issues or where there is relationship issues then you are like completely getting into but also here don't forget in the couple counseling we also go ahead with the individual perspectives too okay we also go ahead with the individual counseling too right but first as a couple we we know where the conflict where the issues are rising then we talk to them individually and then we work in the collaborative process where we call it the joint sessions right but first we also need to understand them individually then we take up the joint sessions then the family counseling works as a whole where the whole family like of course if the person has approached to you and say that yes there is a family issue and you know a lot of people or maybe there is one person in the family uh, because of which the whole family is uh, getting affected impacted so in that case you have to go ahead with the full family counseling or in the individual counseling also if the person is having issues because of the family in that case also we go ahead with the family counseling right but make sure it's as a whole not just one person in the family but you take go ahead with the individual goals as well right <clears throat> group counseling group counseling is mostly uh, like it can be done in, in like anywhere mostly it's done in the group setting where we have children of uh, special needs where we have um, addiction de addiction centers or rehab centers uh, where we like where it is needed where it also helps in developing social skills it also helps in the we usually go ahead with the story um, sessions or maybe like you know where we go ahead with the uh, art sessions or where the person can fully express themselves so we go ahead for the group counseling sessions in this in such situations right but it's not necessary we can also include the individual in the group counseling sessions it's not that where they can develop the social skills where they can work on the personalities personality development okay and also make sure when we are doing the group counseling session individuals have common goals right so suppose a lot of times people have come up with the common goals where there is confidence issues where they are lacking self uh, where they are lacking uh, social skills where they are lacking communication skills so these are the goals the similar kind of goals not necessarily you will get all the people with the similar goals but try to keep the groups where people have similar goals it will be easier for them to fulfill the goals in the group setting in the group counseling session or then make a separate group for the person who have other goals to meet right it can be 3 4 group not necessarily 10 people has to be in the group try to keep the group shorter okay all right now coming to the clear till here all of you okay. yes now Mom. coming to the counseling skills if you have questions and doubt you can just note down the pointers and i'll clear the in the end in the last 15 minutes okay sure okay now talking about the counseling skills main thing the most important thing okay okay what do you think like quickly write it down before i go ahead with the skills close your eyes for a minute and think like you are going to be a counselor okay and right now maybe you are already practicing that what do you think you already have the skills that a counselor needs what are the skills you already have and you are confident about that take 2 minutes and quickly write it down write it down on the paper i will ask you later think and write write it on the paper not on the chat box
once you are done give me a thumbs up okay i'm waiting for others to finish Okay, I'm assuming everybody is done, right? Okay, so talking about the skills, it's very, very important, okay? Because without the skills, we won't be able to go ahead with the session, right? We won't be able to start with the session, okay? We always say that counseling sessions are quite structured, okay? And a lot of things we need to keep in mind. But it also depends on the person's, the counselor's attitude too, right? Even if like right now, maybe suppose I'm taking a session right now, but my the way I talk, the way I communicate should not look like that I'm trained, right? Even if I'm trained, of course I'm trained, but even if I'm trained, but it should not like, you know, it should not show in my gestures that, okay, I'm only speaking the statements, whatever I've read or whatever I have, uh, you know, experienced so far in my work experience, right? It should come like the body language should be very natural. Okay. It should come naturally. And that will only get like, you should be very confident in that. And it should like look like a communication more rather than the proper, oh, I'm, I'm actively listening to you. Oh, I'm also like, you know, please sit down. Please have, have a seat. Okay, I'm right here listening to you. Of course, these are the comforting statements, but don't look like, you know, don't look like a robot. That as if the robot is speaking and you're just like, you know, you whatever you have trained for and just speak like that. No, it should come naturally. Even if you are showing empathy, that should come from within. Right. You are able to do that. You are able to fully understand. It's not just your job. You are able to feel that thing. Right. That's where, that's where the skills matter. Otherwise, the skills is just like you are just giving it a read, understanding and done. You are just going to apply that. No. Try not just to implement it. Try to feel it. Try to be that person. Try to like, you know... Get into each and every skill and then go ahead and implement it. It will be very smooth and easy for you. Trust me. The process will be very smooth. You don't have to make like a lot of efforts. Or you don't have to go ahead with the thinking, oh, how am I going to do this? Or you, you will not feel blank in between the sessions. Right? It will be very smooth. Okay? Now, talking about the counseling skills. So, our first skill is active listening. Do you think that there is a difference between just listening, being a good listener or active listening? Yes, ma'am. Yes? There is a difference. There is a difference, right? Can anyone tell me the difference? You can raise your hand. Ma'am, can, uh, can you repeat the question, please? Just listening, uh, ma'am. Uh, being a good listener or active listening, what's the difference? Ma'am, just listening means like uh, you can be doing any work or like the other person is talking and but you're not paying attention to it, but you're just listening to what they're taking. You're not taking for like uh, seriously. An active listener is like you're trying to solve that problem and you're listening to the words which they are saying and you're trying to figure out and analyze their words. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Deepshika. Thank you. Okay, yes. 
Akshata, Akshata, you raise your hand in the chat box. Go ahead. Uh, ma'am, uh, as she said, ma'am, the same thing. Uh, means uh, seriously, we take up each and every matter. We concentrate on each and every word they say, and uh, we try, try to analyze the problem, what they are feeling. That is actually listening. Uh, just listening means uh, we um, actually not concentrate more on each and every word, and uh, lightly we take up the issue and we try to solve. Absolutely, very rightly said. Thank you for for your responses. Thank okay. You. When we talk about just listening, okay, as Deepika and Akshita said rightly, okay, we are just listening. Even if we're like, suppose I'm just doing your work and you are just talking, so maybe I'm like looking here and there and you know just listening. But I'll make sure that okay, yes, I'm listening, but that is not like that's not a sign of being a good listener. Okay, the other person will feel that you are not completely listening to me. Yeah, even if I'm listening, my ears are right there, but still I'm doing my work. The other person will feel uncomfortable. Okay, when you say that you are a good listener, good listener means you also need to be active listener. Okay, active listening is right now. I'm right here listening. You are talking. I'm also maintaining eye contact. Okay, the gestures, my body language should be like you know is making you feel comfortable that I'm right here. okay listening each and everything whatever you are saying okay without any judgment without interrupting you in between okay without like okay doing some ifs or buts or putting up questions in between when you are talking okay but when you finish you take a pause and then i start okay but starting doesn't mean that i'm responding i was just listening to you so that i can respond it to you no i am acknowledging that whatever i heard that is active listening right you are actively listening to the person making the making feel the, that you are the person's uh, emotions feelings everything is being uh, you know acknowledged the person is feel respected and yes you are responding in a way that the person should feel you know you are being trusted the person can trust you completely and say anything everything with you right that is active listening and i think this is not just a counselor skill this is a human skill right and we need to we need to keep practicing being a human being right it's not just the skill of a counselor we need we really actively need to you know even if a family member is talking to you even if a friend a colleague anybody partner is talking to you we need to be an active listener but a lot of times we we fail to do that we fail to do that we just like listen just to respond or we start giving advices we start giving them suggestions or we judge them unknowingly right but here i think like we need to keep practicing it whatever the skills we are going to discuss here okay we need to keep practicing that this is not a one time thing even if you think that you are a good listener you actively listen to the client but sometimes unknowingly it just come out some words come out in the session okay that's why we need to keep practicing so practice with other people also but yeah try not to play the role of a counselor every time is just in the room right it's just in the session but yeah it's just you need to keep practicing the skills every time right the next is empathy empathy i've already shared that with you okay being empathetic acknowledging each and everything okay being non uh, not criticizing or not being judgmental about their things okay just like being showing acceptance showing that warmth that positivity okay that proper pure connection being trustworthy towards the client right that is empathy all right empathy is like is the most um, i think amazing skill and one should be like you know fully accepted but yeah it's not i'm not talking to you about the personal thing but yes showing empathy in the session uh in the first session itself if it's making the person feel comfortable that's the first step of building the trust and you don't have to make too many efforts uh to make the client you know trust you or feel like okay that yes uh, they should not be resistant to take the session or they should be like you know they should be skeptical uh, skeptical about uh, taking the session so you know that the first step they build the trust okay it's easier for them to trust you right then there is non verbal communication okay non verbal communication is mostly on the basis of the facial expressions your body language your tone voice gestures 
and you know how you show your emotions right if i talk to you on high pitch and you know like and the tone is like pretty uh, you know like in a summer in some rude manner okay rude as in it's just but my tone only oh uh, if i'm talking about and suppose if you raised a question right here okay and i say something that i'll do it after the class please right and just just give me some time so do you think this is the right way to communicate how would you feel about it of course mm. it's rude of course like you'll feel like leaving the class right same is with the client nobody wants to uh, you know like be communicated in such a way right so always always make sure that your communication is very smooth and also with like you know proper good gestures body language speaks a lot facial expression speaks a lot so if you are talking to me right now okay and i'm like uh, i'm listening to you like this hmm okay okay oh like this showing such expressions do you think that this is acceptable also you will feel oh what am i saying oh like is it something wrong with me is it something the client white feel that oh like something is wrong with them that the person is showing such facial expressions body gestures body language matters a lot here that is non verbal communication this skill we really need to sometimes unintentionally we just like you know we lean back we sit like this or we sit like this and listen to the person but it's not the right way we really need to be mindful throughout the session right and this speaks a lot even if you're talking so my expression should be normal very normal but not also straight face not like staring like this this is not eye contact it's like normal okay yeah <laughs> it seems funny but yeah <laughs> You, we, you, <laughs> yeah. So that that's a non-verbal communication. Of course, you're not going to do that. I'm sure, but it's just uh, you know, sometimes unknowingly we do that. Okay, staring like this, or you know, yeah, okay, because you have to maintain that eye contact. No, <laughs> and even if the client is doing that, that then that will be your observation. Okay, the client was <laughs> not blinking the eye, or you know, the client was like it was staring, not even giving proper eye, just staring. So you have to write this in the observation. <laughs> you know, I'm laughing, mom, because most of the time that's what I love doing. Yeah, I was looking at you and laughing then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. I've learned yeah. a lot. I've learned. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So these are the non-verbal communication through gestures. Okay. This is one skill, and like. be very easy be very smooth with it, with it okay and even if by any chance you'd like you do it unintentionally not being mindful about it so just like try to you know again like gain that insight later on the session and try not to repeat that it's okay you're human you can make mistakes and you will learn from that we have also done that earlier right like i used to make a lot of mistakes and i've done that and i proudly say that because that's how i learned that's how i learned right okay now the next one is i hope you are noting down the skills just the pointers for you so you are going to get the ppt but just note down okay. okay then it's questioning skills questioning skills is very very important try to keep open ended questions more okay okay so how do you feel about this so this happened with you like at that in that situation what were the thoughts that was running in your head or like it was there any repetition of thoughts or this or maybe there were multiple thoughts or chaotic thoughts what was it and how you felt in that situation this is an open ended thing it's not a yes or no answer okay yes or no answer is a close ended questioning open ended questioning is where you are giving the client that space to express even if they come up with a situation they want to describe they come up with a story they come up with a past situation anything they they are free to go ahead with it that is and in counseling mostly we go ahead with the open ended questioning okay also sometimes open ended questioning is also through responses so if the person come up with this okay i felt uh, this way that you know the person said um, very um, you know unacceptable things to me in then and like i couldn't take it and you know like i i was very angry and you know uh, i was very very angry but still like it was hard for me to communicate the this thing to the person that i felt bad about it right but i was showing anger 
so at that time then you then you ask okay so you when you were feeling angry so what was the thought at that time what were you feeling what exactly you wanted to communicate to the person hurt what was the hurt about okay through the responses then you are questioning this is probing this is how you use the questioning skills okay and this is how through the responses you question it's not an interview that you are ready with the set of questions and whatever the questions you are ready with they only have to answer no always ready with their responses and then you question them you don't have a set questions here never okay but avoid why questions avoid why you felt this way okay why do you think that the person said all of this to you okay why do you feel that uh, this uh, you know this has to be done in this way okay try to avoid why questions because even they don't have any answers right now it's just that why is like a very direct form where the person also feel clueless and they can also say that i don't know that's what i'm trying to figure it out okay but here what made you think what do you think or what do you uh, you know what made you feel this emotion at that time okay what made you say this thing to the person how about talking in this way maybe like you know it can resolve an issue how about doing this thing in this way these are the questions that we usually use in the session why question we use in the process of in the when we are using the therapeutic approaches like cbt or any other uh, therapies or the techniques we are using so in that case where we where we want the person to realize in the situation so we can go ahead with the why question right where it is needed then it will not be a direct or it's not a negative thing to do okay the person like it's a need need uh, at that time right then we can go ahead with the question the why questioning then there is reflective skills reflecting is basically you are just mirroring paraphrasing or maybe summarizing the thoughts or the feelings that the person is describing okay the person has described the issue uh, that you know like whatever the issue maybe some childhood issue they have described or maybe right now present issue they have come up with okay that this this thing is going on in my in my office and i'm not able to manage the work okay and my boss is like constantly pressurizing me for this thing and i'm not feeling good about it like the whole story they have come up with and then you are like you know helping them to understand through praising that okay so this this is the situation in your office and you know your boss is like constantly pressurizing you for the same thing and you're not like you know somehow you're not able to manage that you're not able to take up that and that is leading you to such issues maybe you're not able to sleep properly and your eating pattern is not also not good and you're like constantly feeling stressed or anxious about the work the kind of work that you're doing or not able to do certain uh, task or uh, meet the deadlines right so this is how you are feeling or how the whole situation i am giving the reflection of the same thing okay is just that is there a summary that i heard you okay i got you i understood you okay and in between that i am also giving them that uh, that reflection that valid validation that yes i am aware about your situation and i can help you with that okay that's how you go ahead with the reflective skill it's basically helping the person to gain more insight about the thing that is already going on a lot of times they they tell you but they are not aware like what is what exactly is the situation going on so through the through the mirroring or summarizing it you can also tell them or add up things whatever the situation in a summary form you can give it to them and give them the insight about the issue that this this is the issue this is the problem and that's why you are facing such issues it is connected somewhere okay it can be connected or somewhere it is connected okay go ahead with a general thing try not to like focus that like it is connected don't tell them that it is connected you are just helping them to give that insight that yes it could be a possibility and a lot of times and then you question 
then you start questioning and reflecting on issues one by one one by one so at you you when you're not able to sleep at night so do you feel that a lot of times you like you know the work is the you're getting thoughts related to work you're getting anxious at like if you you also get nightmares sometimes is is that is that so do you think that the situation is and when you get a nightmare and you suddenly just wake up uh, in uh, in middle of the middle of your sleep and you feel anxious about it and you were well, like what is the thought at that time is it work related only or it is like sometime nightmare your your boss is scolding something like that you are giving them you're not telling them it's just like is it the question mark is it happening is it happening you are understanding their situation and then is it will give them the insight that yes it's happening maybe they're not able to explain what is happening got it sometimes it's very difficult for the person to explain their problem in detail sometimes it's difficult for them to even like if there is a sleep issue then why is it happening i'm not able to so you are giving them words you are giving them hints you are giving them clues so that they get an insight and be aware okay this is happening this is actually happening and they say yes 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 this is happening yes i know i i yes i understand now i got it now so you are giving them insight that's why they they are here and that is your role to give, help them out this is helping through guiding what they already know but they are unable to explain right i'm sure this happens with us also many times when we are not able to explain certain things that we really really feel like explaining it to somebody right when we really want to communicate a thing so badly but still we are unable to do that i'm sure we have like gone through the similar situations right so this is the thing this is the reflective skill right then there is problem solving skills of course problem solving is more on you know you're helping them to be more solution focused rather than problem focused okay so you're helping them assessing the problem knowing the problem understanding the issues understanding their problem and then helping them to get to the solutions achieving the goals basically right not giving them solutions don't get confused here you're not giving the solution you are helping them to solve their problems right it's not you are not you are being a problem solver but you are actually not solving their problem fully okay you are helping them so that they get a direction to solve their own problems you are just guiding them the way that this is the way this is the right direction this is the right way where you can find an insight and be aware what the problem is and what possible solutions you can come up with okay maybe earlier the person was not able to think at all that okay this could be a solution this could be a possible direction or this is this is this is uh, maybe i can choose one option or maybe another option also i can keep a backup option also to go ahead like have multiple solutions at that time the person cannot think they only think about the problem so you are helping them to go ahead on focusing on solutions as well by doing some brainstorming also working on the thoughts constantly and also coming up with some problem solving techniques we also go ahead with role plays here right we give them situations similar to the situations and then we do a role play okay so you being a counselor become the client and the client becomes the other person where they are like the problem okay and then you give the client the words what they are going to do in the situation you are helping them okay or maybe you be the problem and then the client is being the client and again the focusing on the problem but then again you are giving them the insight okay now the problem is right here what will you do in this situation what are the possible things that you can do in the situation if this is not working then what is the other way you can come up with make them brainstorm as much as you can make them do that that will help them to come to the solution better solution for them okay this way you are not telling them what to do but you are helping them what to, how to do it all right now boundaries and ethics very important you have to maintain your boundaries even the client needs to maintain their boundaries you know when there there is a thin line that people can cross easily right whether it is like you know in professional boundaries you have to maintain like even if you have to maintain that respect that awareness the when you are talking about some sensitive issues like you are talking about someone has a traumatic experience of losing a loved one 
मे बी हैड एन अब्यूज हैड अ हिस्ट्री ऑफ अब्यूज और मे बी यू नो हैड मेंटल इलनेस सिवियर मेंटल इलनेस डायग्नोज मेंटल इलनेस और समवन हैज गॉन थ्रू रियली रियली बैड एक्सपीरियंस एनी सेंसिटिव इश्यू और मे बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द रिलीजन और कल्चर ओके सो यू रियली नीड टू बी रिस्पेक्टफुल टुवर्ड्स इट यू रियली नीड टू बी अवेयर फुल्ली अबाउट इट यू रियली नीड टू लर्न अबाउट इट वॉट दे आर सेंग वॉट दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट इट एंड यू रियली नीड टू सॉरी टॉक अबाउट इट इन अ प्रॉपर वे बट ऑल्सो इफ द पर्सन इज क्रॉसिंग योर बाउंड्री देन यू नीड टू use your ethics also and use your boundaries also there is also mutual respect and there is also self respect okay when the person is trying to maybe you know hurt you harm you or say things which is unacceptable for you so it's not like you keep accepting just because the person has some issue no you have to remind them of your boundaries you have to remind them that this is against my ethics and i can't cross the line i am not uh, you know in like in this in, uh, in that position to do that i am sorry about that right but still sometimes people try to cross it right you be friendly be more like getting attracted towards the person okay whether it's a male or a female i'm talking about both right you getting attracted towards the person and yes in that situation i understand you you do you feel that okay what to say what to do you have to like you know politely but tell them and be direct with that that this is not acceptable here in the session in fact in the in the process okay even if they talk okay not in the session we can go ahead and have a coffee maybe later after a session or some day or you know like things like that or if they are trying to like you know do some show some gestures inappropriate gestures to you then also you need to be very very direct okay be direct remind them of the ethics that our ethics doesn't allow i'm sorry right and if the person still continue to do that so please refer the person refer the person to some other a uh, counselor or the therapist and it's okay to do that but try not to be rude with the person okay that will affect you try not to be rude right you just refer it to them and you have to like go ahead with it so some i'm not saying that every time this happens is a very rare cases but you have to be prepared for that boundaries very important professional boundaries very important if the session has to end in 45 minutes so 45 minutes is the time you can't exceed till the time it is needed you feel that i need to give 5 minutes to the person maybe some breakdown happened something has happened you really need to be mindful of the time because then the client will like every time you have to exceed the session then the client might take it like you know leniently and for granted also so always remember be like in the professional boundaries and keep maintaining that throughout okay then uh cultural competence is it's like again like you know giving value uh, of their culture the respect to the backgrounds beliefs values of the client is like i've already told you how you have to be respectful not criticizing or not putting direct questions but you can share certain things maybe like you know whatever the backgrounds or maybe just to build a rapport here okay so you can share certain things or you can ask about their culture okay understand about their culture their beliefs and values more so that you also get to know their mindset their thought process how it actually works maybe there could be fixed beliefs maybe they have been carrying some beliefs that they don't want to change and maybe that is affecting affecting them and that is the reason of their issue okay and they think that you know it's because of the outer world or maybe some other person or the thing that is affecting them you never know you never know so that's why you really need to understand it in each and every aspect okay not just one it's not about your your questioning the culture or the religion no please don't get there also right it's about your understanding their beliefs and cultures religions everything right we they have different cultures they have different backgrounds you are learning about them and exploring them that's how you're doing it and observing them how they are coming up with the thing okay observations throughout throughout the sessions make sure even if a smallest thing that they were like you know uh, while while describing a story they started crying this is also a 
smallest ob observation you need to write it okay this is also a skill and very like it's a mandatory skill to be followed all right then there is patience then there is trust then there is honesty we have to keep practicing patience of course you need a lot of patience in the session like right now you're listening to me very patiently without interrupting without asking question you are just focused okay you have to be fully aware you have to be fully focused you have to build the trust and also you have to build that rapport throughout okay the proper communication has to be maintained all right because without rapport the person will feel like as if only a structured session is happening right so i started with you an introduction so that i can build a connection with you of course i couldn't take it because like because of the lack of time but here like you have to keep maintaining that rapport with the person because that's the first thing you have to do you have to, that's the first thing you greet the person meet the person and just uh you know talk about things talk about their things their interest you also share your interest but not get into the deeper level where they are coming up with your in entering in your personal boundaries okay make it as a communication all right so these are the proper skills and please remember that skills needs to be practiced throughout it's not a one time thing even if you are having like of course you are empathetic you are confident you are uh, having patience you are being patient throughout but still you need to keep practicing a lot of times we can lose that also right a lot of times we can't be like sometimes you are not in the space to take the session if you are not in the space to take the session if you are already going through your issues please don't take the client please don't go resolve your issues first be confident on taking the person taking the client and then go ahead with the session because this is also important if your issues come up in the client in the session then it's not fair for the client it's not fair because the client is fully relying on you they are trusting you they are giving your life to you in a way right so you can't like play around or you can't take that for granted okay so that's why these skills are very very important all right here yeah. all right so now i can take up the questions but before that you can just quickly tell me your skills what you have written were the skills matching from the counseling uh, uh, all the skills or some of the skills you are confident that you already have yes asma uh, sorry ma'am for the disturbance actually i am traveling yeah you told that uh, active listening when we uh, someone is speaking to us we have to be a active listener i think and i am good at that you are being an active listener you're good at that i think that's Maybe. what i think i don't know you But, think you're uh, confident i'm confident with the confidence great great that's that's a good thing thank you asma for sharing that yes yeah yeah because yeah ma'am because uh, 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 okay i'll tell you okay no problem take your time yes khushbu uh, yes ma'am uh, so i feel that i am good in rapport building communication open mindedness and non judgmental being non judgmental towards another another person So I think these are the skills that I'm good at. Nice, nice. So almost all. Not all. <laughs> Covered it. <laughs> We need to work on that definitely. But yeah, uh, I do. Yeah. yeah. Great, great. So these are the main skills. Okay. Right. Great, Kushbu. Thank you for sharing mm -hmm. that. Yes. Who else wants to share? Zalpa, you raising your hand. Oh yes, actually, it has already said it all. But I'm I'm good in listening, and I'm a very open-minded person. Amazing, yes, amazing, very nice, <laughs> great. Thank you. Yes. yes, I love like you know when all of you say that you are being a good listener. Already, you know, good listeners and being active listeners. So I really like that. because that's the when you are being an active listener things becomes easy and trust me in the process it becomes easier when you are listening to the person patiently listening to the person right you're obviously like automatically 
think about like you know you're able to process what the other person is talking saying brainstorm assess then go ahead with the approaches so process becomes easier and smooth for all of you right okay thank you for sharing that you can also like if you want to mention your skills you can mention the skills in the chat box okay so now i can take up the questions or the doubts you have We have 10 more minutes and then, yeah, you can ask any question or doubts regarding the session. These were the basic skills, I understand, but still like the process is longer than this, but this we start from here, the counseling, right? Yeah, Reena. Uh, Ma'am, from the process of counseling, there was a point uh, exploration. Can you explain that uh, one more time? what uh which one exploration exploration process of counseling there's a second um uh, uh, second point exploration can you explain that one exploration okay exploration is basically when you are exploring the client's uh needs and you know what they are they, they in every aspect Right. When, what is the issue? What they are coming up with? What are their values? What are their beliefs? So basically you are what exploring each and everything. Process. Their thought each process. And each and everything. Okay. You are exploring their thoughts. How their thought process is working. You are exploring their emotions. How they are feeling. And in what situations usually the emotions they come up with. Right. And in like in every aspect, whether it's a social situations, whether it's personal situations, whether it's related to a work aspect, whether it's related to personal aspect. So in every aspect, what are the situations they come up with, how they react, how they, uh, you know, respond to certain things, how they take certain things, you're exploring each and everything in their life. Right. And how people are connected to it, how they're dealing with other people. So you're basically exploring everything. Right. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yes. Uh, Zelpa, yes. Yes, ma'am. Actually, you've already explained, but I want to find out more. In case you're in a counseling session with a person, then the person breaks down throughout the counseling. How are you supposed to, to handle such a person? Should you discontinue or you go ahead by showing that person uh, empathy? Yeah. So when breakdown happens, you are there and you can't, like, we don't use such words, okay, it's okay, it happens, okay, please stop yeah. crying, we can't do that, okay? We always make sure that we, we let the person cry, okay? We say that it's okay, I'm right here, please don't stop yourself from crying. Okay, even if that takes a that take good 20 25 minutes and even if it takes a full session, that's okay. Maybe the person has not cried earlier. Okay, maybe the person like it took a lot of courage to express this emotion here in the session, and there's a lot of you know, it was it was a stuck emotion, right? And now the person is coming out with that. So we let the person, I have dealt with such situation and dealt with clients who actually took like, you know, the whole session, 35 minutes crying. And then later on, like, of course, we need to give the closure. We need to, we can't leave the client like that. Okay. So even if like you have to take some more time, give some more time, you have to first make the client settle. And when you see that, yes, they're okay now, they're okay. We, we need, sometimes they feel guilty about it. Sometimes they feel that, oh, I'm so sorry I cried in the session. I'm so really sorry. But you can't say, you can't stop the client in between. But when you are ending it, okay, so make sure you talk about it. Okay, what was the, like, you, you were crying and what were the thoughts, like, you know, what made you cry in the situation? What was it? You ask, you probe further. Then only you'll get to some conclusion that, okay, for the next session at least, you can address them properly. Not at that moment, because it will be too overwhelming then for the client also, right? But dude, in and that process, the client should not feel that oh, my counselor just left me like that, crying, not giving any closure. That will be very abrupt. The client will feel that I don't feel like you know even like talking. I I am again not feeling acknowledged about it, right? So talk about it, but very less. Try not to go in details or dig deeper into it, but talk about it. Okay, what made you 
feel that way or are you feeling the same way right now even if they stopped crying when they are settled okay talk about it what are you are you okay talking right now talk it talk it out are you okay take permission are you okay are you comfortable talking it out or you don't want to talk about it right now it's okay we go ahead whatever you want okay i have also like given like only last two two to five minutes for the session and then like you know then the client level because they wanted to talk in the next session they didn't feel like talking at that time which is okay it's totally fine but i also took a follow up later on i took uh, you know when when uh, through email or through phone message that when the client is okay or not right just a follow up so the client feel that yes somebody is there and i could cry in front of somebody without any judgment without any interruption and the person didn't stop me also yeah this is the thing maybe the person only needed that only that breakdown had to happen and okay. a lot of times the changes we can see the changes not giving ex any expectations here but i'm telling you the possibilities that this can also happen after that okay but give, give a proper closure give a proper closure to all the sessions that is very important closure means you are giving them the comforting statement or maybe you are giving them the task or maybe like but here when the breakdown happens try not to give them any task okay try not to do that because yes, they are not in the space to take it just talk it out and ask them if you're not then we will not talk about it just be there yes. sit it's okay and when the time is okay do you want me to talk like in the next session it's fine i will talk about it in the next session that's totally fine you just take your time for now Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank yeah. you so much. You're welcome. You're most welcome. Okay. Any other question? Doubt? Ma'am, can you give some example for culture captions? For? Culture captions. Uh, talking about the cultures. See, when we are talking about the cultures, like a lot of uh, times people, client come up with this thing that this, you know, uh, they come up with the fixed belief that, you know, this is our culture and this is only happen and this is the set mindset. Or maybe they come up with some belief that, uh, you know what, this is the only thing, you know, I feel that this happens in my family and I feel that uh, this, 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 is, this is the thing, this, this is how it should be. Right. So they are coming up with and which is not working for the person, but the person think that it's working for them. Right. Sometimes they need to break the pattern. The pattern has to break. It's not about there is something wrong with the culture. Okay. We can't say that. No, there's something wrong. It's just that they need to get to the shift that yes, what they're thinking, what they're doing, it's completely different. And that's why it's impacting them negatively. Even if at that time you are accepting it, but still you need to make the person right that their actions are and the consequences, like it's negatively impacting you and the other person as well. But that you will do it later on. But here you will understand what is their culture, what is happening, what 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 is the need to highlight the culture or the things that is happening there. What are the set mindsets? What is the pattern that they have been following? Maybe they have been conditioned Maybe they have the condition. So I give you an example. So um, usually people feel that like in our society, when we have set mindset, so people say that, you know what, um, in 20s till 22, 23, you have to set your career and 25, 26, you have to get married. And then in 30, during 30s, you have to, you know, um, you have children and then you have your life is set. Then you have to, you know, uh, see children and then, you know, like take care of the children and then the retirement plan everything like this this is a set mindset right but now nowadays it is changing right it is changing there is no set pattern here but a lot of people are coming up with the same belief or the mindset with the same thing and they're not ready and they think that's the right way because they have been conditioned because that's the whole point like everybody is doing that around them and they think that is only the right way and they have to follow but somewhere now in in, in this uh, era, people are getting negatively impacted. Why? Because they have the fixed mindset, but other people are not following. Maybe they met another soul and they, they have completely different mindset and now they're not able to take it. And then they say that the person, uh, the other person has a problem, I think. That's the issue. They're not matching. 
and that's why it's not we are not questioning the cultures of course don't do that also don't question the cultures or the religion but yeah we just helping them to shift the mindset we are helping them to break the patterns which can positively affect them right and some people are like jo bhi hai ram ke bharose to waise logo ko kaise deal karna chahiye <laughs> राम के भरोसे राम के भरोसे अगर डील करें उनको बोलो कि राम ने राम जी क्या कर रहे हैं अगर राम जी भी तो आपके साथ करेंगे तभी तो अगर आप उठोगे कुछ करोगे तभी तो राम जी आपके साथ कुछ करेंगे नहीं तो नहीं कर पाएंगे ही कैन डू द थिंग बट ही इज बिलीविंग इन राम करेक्ट सी दैट्स द पैटर्न दैट्स द सेट बिलीव दे हैव राइट एंड वी नीड टू ब्रेक दैट see this is this is a process we we use certain techniques in that therapy techniques if you remember you were in my class right uh, right so if you remember we talked about the approaches how to deal with that using different approaches that's where we try to break the pattern ram ji kuch nahi karenge ram ji to wahan hai aapke sath aap observe kare ki aapko dekh rahe ho aap kuch nahi kar rahe ho to wo bhi kuch nahi karenge aap chahte ho wo kuch na kare aapke liye to agar wo aap chahte ho aap kuch kare to aapko bhi kuch karna padega Like if you really want this thing to happen, you need to make an effort. Don't you think? Questioning and helping them to break that level. It's not easy to break the pattern. Trust me, it's not easy. It takes a lot of time, but but it does. It does break. The shifts does happen. Right. So it's a process. It's a complete process. So maybe like if you attend further classes and so or maybe like you attended. or you are uh, going for the approaches so i'll tell you i'll explain with example how we actually go ahead with breaking the pattern right okay you. you're welcome okay any other doubt question because now we are about to end